It's not exactly a secret that I'm a huge D&D nerd. I mean, for all nine of my videos, I've had this big stack of books and a Critical Role poster right next to me. So it should come as no surprise that I listen to a lot of real play shows. And I mean a lot of real play shows. But in that sea of dice and character sheets, uh, there's always been one that I keep going back to. The only one that I've re-listened to multiple times. Welcome to Monoscore. Today, we're talking about... Welcome to episode one of Dinosaur Park, the tabletop RPG in which our two brave heroes are introduced and then invited to a fancy party. Now this show uh, requires a bit of context to fully appreciate, uh, so I'll run you through sort of the environment that spawned this fever dream of a listening experience. A little podcast called Plumbing the Death Star. Hey everyone, and welcome to this week's episode of Plumbing the Death Star, where we ask the important questions like, is it ethical to bust ghosts? Hosted by the Plumbing Boys, Joel, Jackson, and also Joel, uh, this podcast is about answering dumb pop culture questions in as chaotic and strange ways as possible. I personally recommend listening to some of the more unhinged episodes, like How Would You Kill Harry Potter, How Would You Compete with Westworld, and Can or Should Sandman Become the Moon? I think they do a great job of showing how well they can take these prompts to their absurd limits. For the purposes of this video, though, the only important episodes of Plumbing are Is John Hammond a Bad Boss? and Dinosaur Park 2, The Lost Park. In the first of these episodes, Jackson makes the honestly wild claim that he could run Jurassic Park better than John Hammond could. As he uh, stumbles his way through designing this park, the Joels tell him just how bad all his ideas are and just how many civilian casualties they have caused. In this process, they craft an honestly insane story in which Joel and also Joel bring a class of middle schoolers and a platoon of mercenaries to test the theme park he's made. Only the Joels survive. <laughs> in the second installment, Jackson reaches out to the Joels, in spite of their request that he leave them alone, and in a parody of Jurassic Park 2, they have to delve into another park with a group of poachers. They try very hard, and fail a lot, to kill Vince Vaughn. It escalates to the point that a giant T-Rex is unleashed onto Melbourne. They deal with the T-Rex, blame it on Vince Vaughn, and retire to New Zealand. These episodes, uh, while quite funny, exist in this weird space between storytelling and just rambling speculation. It feels like it could use a bit more narrative continuity. And that's where we get to the topic of the day. So this season, unlike its sequels, uses Rysis, the anything RPG albeit with a few odd rule changes. Rysis is a fairly simple RPG. Really all there is to say is that characters have cliches set to a certain number. When they want to do something, they figure out which cliche makes the most sense, and then they roll that many die. Roll high enough, you succeed. Roll too low, you fail. Um, normally, these cliches would be a bit more uh, general and grounded, but I guess Jackson decided that it would be funnier if one of Joel Doucher's uh, cliches was Subway. Eat fresh. Another very nice bit of this show is how short each of the episodes are. Don't get me wrong, I love Critical Role and those unedited feature-length sessions, but it's hard to keep up with four hours a week. Meanwhile, Dinosaur Park is about half an hour per episode with only 14 episodes in this season, uh, rounding out to a little less time than the last episode of Critical Role's Campaign 2. That was a long night for me. Okay, the next thing that I wanted to talk about is Jackson's ability to make literally nothing in his world sacred and just let go of the rules. Any more serious uh, game, I think this would be like a problem, but because at its core, Dinosaur Park is meant to be a comedy, it ends up working deeply in its favor. The number of things he lets even have a chance of happening is honestly amazing. Jackson just casually throws away any sense of internal logic in his world. In the hands of practically anyone else, uh, this sort of thing would just feel lazy and erratic, but for some reason, these three pull it off in a way that feels less like a shattered pile of plot points 
and more like the craziest House of Mirrors any carnival's ever seen. Now, this wouldn't work nearly as well if the characters in this show weren't fully aware of the insanity of these situations. Our two PCs, alongside a changing cast of side characters, take turns initiating crazy shit and playing the straight man, expressing that they are well aware of the absurdity of whatever situation they're in. Now, the rest of the video is just full of spoilers, uh, so here's a warning! Uh, if you don't want the first season of Dinosaur Park spoiled, pause the video, go into the description, I've linked it on Spotify, uh, listen to the first season, come back. Alright, with that said, I'm gonna go over some of the crazy shit that happens in just two episodes of this, and then talk about some of my favorite moments that happen after that, because I do not have the patience to go through all of the insane things, because I would just be summarizing this show. Just watch, just listen, like, listen to it. So the first episode starts with the Joels going over the terrible character sheets Jackson made for them. They are made up of mostly references to the original plumbing episodes, as well as a few little pieces of insanity that just come from nowhere. Um, in this world, Zamet can't swim, and Doucher is weak to ghost. A bit that never comes up, but I love that he wrote it in with absolutely no plans to include ghosts at all. He also uh, won gold in the 1986 Winter Olympics for Skeleton. Somehow that comes up a lot. After the character sheets, we meet Mickey, uh, Jackson's Irish bodyguard. Jackson does a surprisingly good Irish accent. Uh, who lets them into Jackson Bailey's mansion. He'll be important later. They've been invited to his mansion with the understanding that if they do one last favor for him, they'll never see him again. Vince Vaughn and a guy who looks like George Costanza but isn't George Costanza are in Jackson's mansion. Oh yeah, these two characters come along with them on their trips. Uh, Vince Vaughn somehow survived being thrown into the sea last time. Uh, he only says wah, and guy who looks like George Costanza but isn't George Costanza just doesn't say anything, mostly speaking in shrugs. Uh, that's pretty much everybody that matters at the mansion, uh, as all these characters end up accompanying them on their trip to Dinosaur Park. Over dinner, uh, Jackson explains to them that the original Dinosaur Park from that first episode is still around, and that a research team has been trapped inside for two years. He needs the Joels, Mickey, and the other two guys, who have really long names that I don't feel like repeating. Um, they don't really contribute much, but uh, they go in and save them. They do this, he'll sign a restraining order, and also give them a hundred dollars. They don't want to bring Vince Vaughn. Can we not have Vince Vaughn? I'm afraid he's, again, this is not, like, he didn't come here tonight. Uh. He's been here for the last month. Like, last, <laughs> you invite Vince Vaughn around once, and he thinks that his house is your house. It's not a Mikasa Sukasa deal, Vince Vaughn. Just barely shoots him a dirty look. Get him out of my hair, real favor. <laughs> Fine. I agree. Fine. But I won't be nice to him. <laughs> With all that exposition out of the way, here's my favorite bit of the episode. Uh, a bunch of waiters bring out a delicious cake and some jelly. Sit, sit. I put Let's my celebrate for in the morning. I you put know. my cigarette out in the cake <laughs> <laughs> and say, "Scotch, please." <laughs> I'm going to bed. <laughs> um, let's just. Joel Dusho, or Joel, you start to smell smoke. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Please just have to bed. No? <laughs> I, I smell the smoke. Mm -hmm. I'm still hazy drunk, yeah. but like, my brain's still... You drank a whole bowl of punch. You're not in a good way. Really, you... I smell the smoke. I think about it. I'm like... Death probably won't be that bad, and I go straight to bed anyway. <laughs> yeah, they burn the mansion down, it's a good time. Uh, in episode 2, they gather up outside the burned down mansion and get supplies for their trek through the defunct Hell Park. They get a long list of equipment that anyone fighting dinos would need, like uh, an AK-47, a machete, a shotgun, some brass knuckles, a whole mess of explosives, a box of ribeye steaks, a foot-long chicken teriyaki subway sub, and what was originally some mace, but 
And uh, can you can you actually get that mace for me? <laughs> Jackson reaches into his smoking jacket, pulls out his own personal supply. <laughs> Are we talking mace as in like a spray mace, or mace as in like a medieval weapon well, mace? Because I was thinking medieval. Originally, I thought like spray, but now <laughs> a like medieval a mace, stuff? yeah. yeah. Or a bomby knocker, even. Because I like the idea that Jackson had his own personal <laughs> mace in his jacket. I pull it out and I'm like, I'm just scared of walking down alleyways alone at night. No, Gotta I'm have a little protection, no, you, know you know do. what I mean? It's a you dangerous do. neighborhood in my house. <laughs> Sick. <laughs> oh, also, pills. Lots of drugs. Just so much codeine, Valium, ecstasy. Anyways... Mickey leads them into the basement of the now burned down mansion where underground tunnels lead to an underground warehouse where they climb into a few jeeps and drive under the earth's surface towards Dinosaur Park. Before they go, however, uh, Doucher asks what may be the most important question ever asked in this show. How much codeine would it take to kill Vince Vaughn? <laughs> <laughs> Let's see if Jackson knows. <laughs> wow, yeah, I'm well aware. <laughs> I've been plotting for months. Jackson really reaches into the bag and pulls out a handful of the right amount of pills or whatever. I put that in a separate bag. <laughs> if he ever gets too annoying, One. while he's napping, pop them in. That's, that's what I do. <laughs> I've been slowly figuring it out. I did, oh, two, three, building it up. And I reckon this will get him done. So I've got, we've got a bag of various pills, and now I've got a bag of codeine, in brackets, lethal dose. <laughs> lethal dose for Vince. <laughs> they hop into the Jeeps and start driving. When they get going, um, Zaman hears what sounds like a child in his truck. Now, normally in Rysis, uh, when you take damage, you would lose skill dice, right? But I guess... Um, because Jackson has decided that it would be funny. Um, when the Joels would take damage, one of the ten Argentinian children that they have to bring along with them dies. All of them have names, and the Joels have to roll to decide which one is their favorite. How the fuck does the Dream SMP have more fans than this shit? <laughs> Then they run over a saber-toothed tiger. All of this happens in the first two episodes of the show. And it only gets crazier. Dusher forms like a psychic connection with an ancient bear using those drugs I mentioned earlier and a ribeye steak. Um, he skins an ancient ape and wears its pelt as a suit. Uh, he catches a bullet and throws it back at a mercenary with enough force to kill them and he crawls inside a giant centipede named Jake. Zamit punches the ice off a frozen door, turns the sign at a snack bar into a buster sword, and fixes a man's speech impediment with about 30 seconds of motivational speaking. Along the way, a mercenary revives his friend with a simple sleight of hand magic trick, a pterosaur with the face of a man named Galvano tries and fails to escape the aviary. And it all culminates in a final battle with a massive T-Rex that has Jackson's face. They climb in its mouth, make it OD on pills, and destroy the park with a nuclear-powered roller coaster, killing Doucher in the process because they forgot there are more than three cars in the coaster. Endings are weird. Uh, let me know if you want me to make a video about the next season of the Dinosaur Saga. Dinosaur World in the comments. Oh. <laughs> Um, please, again, if you liked this, like it. If you want to see more, like perhaps more videos about the Dinosaur Saga or other Sans Pants stuff. I really want to make a video about Adam's World of Darkness. Uh, subscribe. Check out my Twitch, join my Discord, and have a great night. Thank you so much for watching, and just keep doing it. Bye.